Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for an eyeshadow palette review. Surprise, surprise, I feel like that's mainly what I do on my channel. But um, about two weeks ago now, I did a video where I sort of did a get ready with me um, using a makeup that sort of makes me feel good and inspires me, like, yeah, does that kind of thing. And I used um, the Sigma Enchanted palette in that for a look and um, I was kind of, surprised and impressed with the formula and I asked you guys if you wanted to see a more in-depth review with more looks and a lot of people said yes so that's what we're doing today. Okay so before I get onto the looks um, I'm just going to show you the palette so this is the Sigma Enchanted palette uh, it's their latest eyeshadow palette the box is the same as the packaging which is really nice they both have the shades on the back which is really nice and it also comes with a double-sided brush which I really appreciated now in my get ready with me when I use this for the first time I just used this brush I think with one other brush and it was it worked a treat this is probably one of the best um, additional brushes that I've found in a palette because of course Sigma is known for their brushes so the quality of the brushes are really nice and also the shapes are really really handy and I find that I use a packing brush and I use a blending brush and that's the main thing I use. I might use a sort of smaller brush for detailing, but um, as the general sort of look that I use for eyeshadows, I use these types of brushes. So if you have something like a color switch where you can just sort of clean uh, in between shades, you could do a whole look using this brush and I really, really liked that. I thought this was a good addition to the palette. Normally I'm like, it's a like, just wasting space, but this one was really, really nice. So you can see that with the palette, there are five, these super sparkly shades that are, I think it's the first time Sigma has had it in their uh, palette, like this particular formula. And that's what I think is most special about this palette. I will talk about the pros and cons at the end after I show the looks. The rest of the shades are pretty much matte, except for these two shades that are more standard shimmers. Now, um, I will talk about the formula a little bit later on uh, in my pros and cons, but I definitely think the draw card to this palette is the sparkle shades. And then the other shades just sort of help complete the look. It is overall quite a cool toned uh, palette. There are some warmer shades in here, like these two here, but the rest are more on the cooler spectrum. They're more mauves, they're more cool toned browns. You got some greens, you got some, yeah, a mauvey transition color. So it is more of your cooler tone palette. So let's run through some of the looks I created, but I'm gonna start with the one that I did in my Get Ready With Me because I did use some shades in there that I haven't really delved into too much since using it. Um, I will use that as my first look. So on the screen, there'll be a close up of my eye look that I used in my Get Ready With Me. If you do wanna see how I got that, there is a video that I'll link in the description box, but I believe I use the shades Budding and Cosmos on the top lid, which are the shimmer shades. I used Metamorphosis on the lower lash line and I used uh, the mattes Innocent, Loam and Evergreen to sort of complete the look. So uh, that's sort of look number one uh, that I've pulled from a past video, but now let's get on to the looks that I've created since then. All right, so for the first additional look, I decided I wanted to use this in a little bit more of a subtle way. Um, I really like the glitters and I sort of want to play with them more, but today I'm literally going to take a blood pressure monitor off um, and then I'm going to catch up with a friend for a coffee. So I thought, look, I'm not going to go full on glitter. Um, so what I decided to try today and get them out of the way was sort of test these two shimmers. So um, that's what I have mainly on my eyes. I'll zoom in in a second, but um, I set my base like the crease with this color. I use this shade here, which is like a cool toned uh, light shimmer. I use that on the inner part of the eye and the lower lash line. And then I used this one, which is also light, but it's more yellow toned. I use that on the middle and the middle. And then I went in with brown and I just sort of deepened that up in the corners. So that's what I've used. I wanted to get these out of the way because I find them probably the most boring shades of the palette. Um, they do apply quite nicely. They're not super bold or anything really, really interesting but they do add a bit of brightness to a look. So if you are using the mattes or you are using the sparkles and you just want something to like lift the color a little bit, uh, these colors will do that. They're just not, they're not that exciting. But I don't hate this look. Um, at the start, I was like, oh, it's gonna be too light and frosty for me, but you can see the purple, you see the gold, you see the brown. Um, I just used a black wing liner with it and um, I think it looks quite like traditional. So it's, yeah, it's quite a pretty look. All right, look number two for this video anyway, and I wanted to hit up some glitter, but I wanted to hit up some sort of subtle glitter 
everyday glitter because uh, it's the weekend and I'm just doing sort of casual things today. And I didn't want anything too bold and crazy. So I'm just wearing two shades from this. Um, I am wearing this shade, uh, which I showed in that sort of first look from the other week. Um, so that's a nice sort of nude rose gold color. I put that over glitter glue and then I blended it out with that mauve. So um, it's really, really simple. And I think it's really pretty and effective. It applied really easily over the glitter glue. I didn't put any on the lower lash line, but it did stick. Um, not as intensely, but it did stick. And the mauve just worked really well at sort of blending it out. So I'll zoom in. So hopefully you can see the like sparkly. It's really, really pretty. I just used a bit of mascara. I just want it to be once again, sort of like subtle glitter if possible, but I think it's really, really beautiful. All right, so we're back with another look and this is just a two eyeshadow look. I really wanted to try, okay, I'm doing a sort of semi experiment. So I really wanted to try this shade all over the lid and I wanted to blend it out with that warm shade there because um, I sort of think it's like a good pairing since this has sort of like that um, warm base to it. So it sort of matches, but I really wanted to try it with a normal primer and then also try it with a glitter glue because what I've noticed with these glitters is they're really, really beautiful over glitter glue, but not everyone owns a glitter glue. So I wanted to try it today in a more paired back way with a normal primer. So that's what I've done today. I've just got my uh, Project Pan Primer, the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Eyeshadow Primer. And you can see that it is glittery, but it's not intense. It's more of a subtle sparkle and it doesn't have much color. Now it's pretty, it's very pretty, um, but it's not as sort of intense as you would expect from something like that looks like that in the pan. So. Uh, what I'm actually going to do tomorrow is come back, use the same two shades, but apply it over glitter glue and make the look a little bit more intense. So even though this look is very, very subtle, um, what I do like about it is it proves that there's a bit of versatility with these shimmers. So you can make them quite subtle and just a little bit of sparkle, or you can build them up and make them look a lot more intense. This is more of an everyday makeup look. So um, it's nice that you can actually wear them in this way. All right, I'm back today with the same eyeshadows, just a more bold version using a glitter glue. So as a recap, not that you need it, but um, I used this shade all over the lid and I blended it out with that shade. The difference that I did with this look as well, because I used glitter glue, I did set my crease with this color here because um, glitter glue is, it grips to the eyeshadow so well that if you put like a matte over the top, it'll look patchy. So um, because I did use the glitter glue as my primer all over, I wanted to sort of set the crease. So that's why I used the cream. So hopefully you can tell how vibrant uh, the shimmer has become. It's a lot more intense. You can see uh, the base of the color a lot more, the blue a lot more. I did go a little bit um, stronger with the matte as well, just to sort of balance it out. So yesterday, I wanted the sort of matte to be a little bit more subtle because I didn't want it to take over the look. Whereas I could use a little bit, build it up a little bit more because um, the shimmer sort of balanced it better. One thing I did find interesting from this color is it actually quite applies quite red on the eyes. I thought this was gonna be more orange, um, but it almost has a sort of berry tone to it. So um, I thought it was gonna be really warm. It sort of looks, yeah, reddy brown, which I thought was, interesting. I just expected it to be a lot more orange than it was. So um, it blends really nicely with the color, but it is, it was different to what I was expecting in the pan. And the glitter glue that I'm using with it is just my Too Faced glitter glue. So this is, uh, in my opinion, a must have in my collection because it acts like a normal primer. Um, when people think of glitter glues, they often think of like actual glues or um, there's a lot of products on the market made by loose glitter companies that are like a thin liquid uh, and you got to mix it with the glitter and then apply it and it's a bit messy. This is literally like a primer. Um, you just put it on and blend it out so it's just like a normal primer um, but it's a little bit thicker and it, it stays tacky. So um, this is a really great one because it's really really effective but also it's not much harder to use than a normal primer. But yeah, you can really see that um, my finger is gripping to my hand. It's like moving the skin a lot in that area. So uh, that's a really great one. So hopefully you can see that this is just more of a ramped up version. So you can see the shimmer a lot better. You can see the color a lot better. I did put more of that matte in the crease on the lower lash line. I did use some false lashes in the outer corner. I'm still using a brown liner, but it's a darker brown liner for a more intense look. So this is just sort of like the 
amped up version. I like both of them um, and I think they both have a place, but I do think the glittery shades look a lot more impressive with a glitter glue than just on its own. All right, we've got the next look. This might be the second last look. I really need to get back to my one month, one palette series um, because I've taken a week off doing this. Uh, but this look, I wanted to use the gold and the purple. And what I did was I blended it out with this and also added a little bit of brown. So that's what I've done. It is applied over glitter glue just to make it very intense. The lower lash line doesn't have any primer at all. So you can really see how it does still grip to the skin if you sort of pack it on. And the liner that I used on the top lash line and also my waterline is by Inglot. And it's uh, this one here, which is the shade 64. There we go. So hopefully you can see I did the purple on the outer half and the gold on the inner half. And I think it's a really pretty combination. I put the gold on and I was just like, wow, that's a gorgeous gold. I can see it applying beautifully over bronzes or browns um, with olive tones as well. And the purple is really, really beautiful. I can see it going with sort of nude colors, cool tone colors, even reds. So I think they're really, really pretty. I really like the combination together, um, but I reckon they would look beautiful on their own. And I also think that if you didn't use the glitter glue, once again, these would be like everyday sparkle shades where you just get a wash of sparkle um, instead of that really um, bold sparkle. But I think it's really pretty. All right, to be honest with you, the last look I created was around six days ago because I had a bit of a tummy bug. So I didn't feel like using glittery eyeshadows, um, but this is the last look that I've created. Um, so I don't know what number it is, but it is what it is. Um, and what I wanted to do was sort of just make a sort of basic eye with um, a sort of shimmery liner. So I really did want to revisit that Cosmos shade, which is that sparkly green that I used in my very first look. I hadn't used that since because it's kind of a, a smoky look. It's almost got a blackened base. And I sort of thought, look, I'm not really into a smoky eye at the moment. The weather's getting a bit warmer, but a nice way to sort of inject it into a look is maybe applying it over liner. So I've done that today. I'll zoom in. So what I did today was I used the color Loam, which is that um, dark brown. I sort of just put in the crease and sort of on the lid a little bit. I deepened it tiny bit with Claystone, which is a darker brown. Uh, it kind of looked the same, so I don't think there's any point to it. I also ran the browns on my lower lash line, and then I got a sort of soft brush, and I used uh, Sunburst, which is that uh, sort of champagne shimmer shade. I just put that all over the lid. It's very light. Um, it's a little bit too light for me. And then I used a black liner, so a gel liner. I did my wing and then I patted on Cosmos over the top. So, so I wasn't too pedantic about having to apply it when the liner was wet because I just did the liner as I normally would um, on both eyes. And then I just got an angle brush and just patted it on for a bit of sparkle. So I think it's a really pretty way to add um, a bit of sparkle into a look and a different way to use these sort of shadows. You can do it with the purple, you can do it with metamorphosis, you could do it with the gold. Um, it's a fun way to add a bit of sparkle. You might realize that I think the one shade that I haven't shown in this video is actually the black, which is called Wicked. Now, to be honest, I actually did use that and I used it in a look similar to this today. Um, I had a horrible makeup day. I had to redo my base because it just wasn't sitting right. And then I used black and I used the, the dark green as well. I used the um, evergreen shades, the mattes. Um, and it was just too smoky and too bold. And I was like, I can't do it. I'm filming beauty news after this. I can't have a really horrible makeup day. So I actually redid my eye makeup to what it is now. So I have used the black, but I don't think I've shown it in a look. Um, and the black applies similar to the other mattes. They, they aren't like overly pigmented, but they apply quite nicely and you can build it up. So uh, it, yeah, it's nothing amazing, but it's very, very usable. So after using this for as many days as I did, um, I overall have quite positive feelings towards it. So that's a good thing. There are some pros and there are some cons. The highlight of this palette is the shimmery formula. Um, I think they are beautiful, but I do think um, to get the most out of them, you need to apply it with a glitter glue. And I'll give an example on my hand. I'll swatch it over. No primer, normal primer and glitter glue. So on my hand, I've got no primer here. I have my normal primer, which is um, my Bare Minerals Gen Nude Primer. This is my Project Pan. So that's that tinted stripe there. And then 
This part here, I've got my Too Faced Glitter Glue, which acts like a normal primer, but it just stays tacky. It is translucent, so you can see it doesn't add a color like the Bare Minerals one does, but it works great at holding a shimmer or a glitter. And I think it's invaluable and it really makes a difference with this palette. So um, I'm gonna start with the shade Metamorphosis on a Sigma brush, and I'm just gonna put it here. So you can see it does show up and it's a pretty color but it isn't as bold as, you know, maybe you want it. Pick up a little bit more, put it on the primer. As you can see, it definitely sticks better on the primer than it does bare skin. And then lastly, we're gonna put it on the glitter glue where it really grips to the skin. You can see the difference between it. And I really think this palette shines with a glitter glue. If you're not willing to invest in a glitter glue, you're not gonna get the maximum benefit of this palette and it's gonna be really lackluster. Like why have this when you can have this? Or at least have the like options. And that's what I showed in this video. Like you can have it really intense and have a really beautiful sparkly eye. Or there's days where you might wanna just use it as a wash of color, but that versatility is great, but you need the right base to get the maximum potential. And because these shades are the most impressive of the palette, you really want to be able to get maximum potential. Look at that, it's gorgeous. That's yeah, all right, and that's eh. So if you see them swatched like this in store, to get that effect on your eye and applying it with a brush, you need to either apply it wet, which you can do, but I don't like applying it wet because once it's dried down, it can flake off. Whereas a glitter glue holds it until you wash it off. So a glitter glue will get you this effect. Now these are the things that make this palette interesting and worthwhile. If it wasn't for these, I would not recommend this palette because these are beautiful. They can transform a look. They can take you from day to night. Um, they're really, really fun. And they give me really like Pat McGrath vibes. So Pat McGrath has these sort of um, formulas that are really, really um, pressed fine glitter and they give an effect like this. But of course this palette is a lot more affordable um, than Pat McGrath. So if you did like the look of the sparkly shades, you can get an idea of whether or not you would use them um, with this type of palette. So this is the highlight of the palette, but to get the maximum results, you really do need to pair it with um, a glitter glue. And I do think the Too Faced glitter glue works a treat. Besides the shimmers, I do think the other shades are okay. Um, the mattes are just pretty standard. They're not bad, they're not great, um, but they're pretty much there to just complete the look. So you have some really basic shades. You have a cream, you have a transition, you have a warm brown, a cool brown, then you have the darker brown, the forest green and the black. So just to smoke it out and make it a little bit more um, sort of nighttime. So um, these are more just complete the look. Yes, you can do all matte looks with them and they're fine, but they're pretty standard and they're just very functional. Um, nothing, they don't blow you out of the water, but they're, they're pretty functional. What I think is a missed opportunity with this a little bit is that um, I feel like these two browns are way too similar. Um, I just reach for this lighter one because I think it just is a nice sort of tone and you can build it up, but you can definitely build it up to get to a shade like this, or you could even add a little bit of black to make it deeper. So for me, I think there is some wasted space here where they could have got rid of one of the browns, put in a dark purple, because there's a lot of like mauvey shades and purples in here that really would have benefited from. Um, this is a beautiful shade and it adds like a different element to a look. So why not bring in like a deep plum purple version just to make it a little bit more versatile. So these functional, not amazing. Then what sort of lets me personally down the most in this palette besides the double up of the browns and me just going, why isn't there a different color in here? Um, the two shimmers are just sort of bland. So we have one that is sort of like a champagne gold. So it applies very sheer and quite light, um, a little bit frosty on me. And then you have a light pinky purple, which is pretty, but once again, it's not super bold. It doesn't show up really well in the eyes. It's more like just a wash of color. And if you like these colors as your, your sort of all everyday sort of throw on look, you will like these. But for me, they just don't do much and I don't really reach for them. I sort of forced myself to reach for them in like today's look and that first, that second look when I use these on the lid, but they're not my cup of tea. And especially if you're going to use one of these as an inner corner highlight and you're trying to compete with the glitters, you're barely gonna see it. So for me, these were a waste of space. I would have liked to have either seen more sh glitters or more mattes or even just a little bit more richer tones, like a mid-tone mauve that's quite nice and metallic or a goldy bronze. Something that I can see myself actually reaching for as like a base or as a complementary shade to the glitters and the mattes, 
this I just thought was like, they're like, we've got two spaces. People like light, sh like half-assed shimmery shades, don't they? So for me, that was just um, like the lowest point of the palette. So if that's the lowest point of the palette, this palette is pretty decent because um, they're not offensive shades. They're just not something that I would reach for personally. So when I try palettes like this, um, sort of my test is would I reach for this palette again amongst my uh, palette collection of like 150 to 200 palettes and the answer would be yes I would but I would reach for this for the, sh the glitters so when I look at the shimmers I'm like I'm actually gonna not gonna reach for this palette for the shimmers I'm not gonna reach for this palette for the mattes I'm gonna reach for this palette because of the glitters so I would have actually preferred a whole row of glitters a whole row of mattes to help really complement and finish the look. So if you're interested in glitters and you wanna play with them more, this is one to check out because this is very, very comparable in my opinion to Pat McGrath. But if you don't like glitters, I wouldn't go for this palette because that, that is definitely the standout, definitely the star of this palette. And the rest of it is just sort of like staging for the star, which is the glitters. So um, yeah, I would have loved to have seen more glitters, few more colors, more variety of mattes, get rid of these and it would have been such a great palette but as it is I'm really interested to see where Sigma's going with this formula because I have tried Sigma palettes before they haven't been my cup of tea and this is the only one I've tried out of I don't know four or five Sigma palettes that I'm like yes there is something to this that is very unique I like where the direction's going keep doing it Sigma because the formula is really really gorgeous but look at um, creating a really, really good glitter glue because that's where these shine. If you don't have a glitter glue, you're gonna be so disappointed. So this is, I think, currently available wherever you buy Sigma. I'll link a few places down below. But please, 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 if you're going to buy this, if you like the color story and you wanna play with glitters, buy this to go along with it. Otherwise, you will be quite disappointed in it um, because you can't get the effect in the pan, on the eye, without a bit of help. All right, that was my review. Hopefully it was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one for more eyeshadow talk because I've got a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I'm playing with these days. So it is what it is. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.